Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to this next in our webinar series. Um, I'm Alistair Hines. I'm one of the senior GIS consultants here at Azure UK, and as well as uh, helping coordinate the, the technical content for the uh, webinar series this year, I'm also uh, take a lead on Experience Builder. So I'll be uh, dropping back in at the end to, to help out with the Q&A. Um, we're doing the Q&A slightly differently this time uh, to help us make sure that we're answering the most popular questions. We're actually uh, using Slido, uh, so you can access it using the information on the screen there. And then once you're in, as well as being able to post questions, you can also uh, vote on uh, existing questions uh, and they naturally float to the top and help us uh, hit the most popular questions first. So we'll share this again at the end um, and um, you'll be able to kind of log in at that stage. Uh, there's just a couple of housekeeping things for me to cover before we before I hand over to your uh, presenters today. Uh, so the webinar is being recorded and a link will be shared in the follow up email. The follow up email will also include some links to useful resources and also a survey. So uh, I know it's a cliche, but we'll your feedback really does help and it does kind of help us shape the webinar series uh, going forwards uh, through the end of this year and into next year. The uh, Q&A, uh, as I've already mentioned, uh, we're using Slido, uh, so you can log in now with those uh, details, um, either via the um, URL and the codes or uh, using the QR code if, you, if you're gonna kind of join in via your mobile. You can submit questions as we go through uh, as I say, if you see a question that you're kind of also interested in, uh, if you give it uh, an upvote, uh, we'll cover off the most popular questions uh, first at the end. And we'll share the QR, uh, sorry, the uh, Slido details uh, at the end as well. So if you don't manage to kind of grab them just now, then uh, we can come, you'll get a chance to kind of log in and join in the Q&A at the end. So uh, to make sure I don't use up too much of the time, I'm going to hand straight over now to uh, your presenters for today, Dan and Adriana. Thanks, Alistair, and hi, everybody. Uh, my name's Dan. I'm a customer success consultant here at Esri UK. Uh, and along with Adriana, we're going to go through uh, how to configure some next generation apps with ArcGIS Online. So let's take a look at what we'll cover today. We're going to introduce Experience Builder and discuss some of the difference between the other app builders. I'm then going to set the scene with a small scenario to help us through the demo. Uh, and then with about five minutes or so at the end, we'll have time for questions like Alistair mentioned. Uh, so what is ArcGIS Experience Builder? Uh, it's a web app that empowers you to quickly transform your data into compelling web apps and maps without writing a single line of code. You can build map centric or non map centric apps and display them on a fixed or scrolling screen on single or multiple pages. You can perform drag and drop operations to choose the tools you need from a rich set of widgets, uh, design your own templates and interact with your 2D and 3D content all within one app. Experience Builder is built into ArcGIS Online and ArcGIS Enterprise Systems, so it leverages all your existing data as well as accessing other sources through the ArcGIS Living Atlas of the World. In addition, ArcGIS Experience Builder is built on an extensible framework, so developers in your organizations can build their own widgets and templates. This results in agile web apps that can aid in decision making across multiple projects. So a modern interface allows users to place widgets and content anywhere using a drag and drop utility, as well as a flexible design framework without coding. And we're really gonna try and highlight this for you today towards the end of the demonstration. With a mobile adapted design, you can customize how your web app looks and performs in desktop, tablet or mobile devices with live viewing options available before publishing for fault finding or testing. Experience Builder comes with a built in three step editing function, allowing you to edit and test changes before committing to publishing your experience to the active end user facing URL. This feature enables the editor to avoid implementing breaking changes without testing as well as removing the need to take published apps offline in order to make changes or fix errors. And incorporating data from other ArcGIS products such as ArcGIS Story Maps, Dashboards or Survey123 is as seamless as you might expect utilising a built-in embedded content function. You have the ability to add any type of imagery and data, whether 2D or 3D, for a more immersive experience and interact with both types of content in one app and all users can create custom templates to fit a theme or branding directive, 
as well as extending the customization further by empowering developers to create those custom widgets, further tailoring an experience. Experience builders can currently being developed, added to and improved. This means it might not have absorbed a specific capability that might be found in one of the other app builder routes yet. This does not, however, mean it won't be coming in the future or isn't already available through a slightly different means. And this matrix provides a high level overview of the state of current app builders. And the next slide will go into detail just a little further in terms of experience builder versus web app builder widgets. So we can see that Experience Builder is catching up in terms of functionality, but it's worth mentioning here that we've already taken over in terms of customization, layout flexibility and visual presentation when it comes to Experience Builder versus Web App Builder, for example. And this is set to continue into the future as Experience Builder utilizes the JavaScript 4.0 API. With that said, we're actively looking for feedback and comments on which widgets you'd love to see in the experience next. This will directly impact the choices we make, helping aid us in creating the perfect solution for all of our users. It's worth pointing out here that where the matrix describes a widget or piece of functionality as not planned, this doesn't mean it isn't available as it may well be achievable in a different way. For example, the stream capability is available through ArcGIS Velocity or data aggregation replaced by ArcGIS Online feature layer capabilities. These changes are captured in the documentation, uh, which will include in the post webinar email with some links and useful bits uh, of information. So let's set the scene for the rest of the webinar and have a think about how we can achieve our goals. Adriana and I are running an anti-fly tipping campaign in a bid to help tidy our local area. We already have a survey up and running with some submissions already collected, but we'd like to collect more and encourage the public to join in as well. I'd like to include our survey alongside an overview of our efforts so far, but I'm conscious of making this more complicated than it needs to be by using different apps or URLs to collect and collate our information. I think we might need to focus our end users' attention and house everything in one place. With instant apps, we get access to some speedy solutions in order to help push our data out to the public. So let's look at some of the recent updates and how these might help us in today's session. We could utilize the updated social sharing options, allowing app users to share the current appearance of the app, uh, such as the map extent, visible layers and open pop-ups. And other updates include more theme settings to change the font and logo, as well as our organization's theme, the option to use Adobe Analytics for tracking app usage, as well as the ability to select records from a table and export to CSV or including insets found in the November 22 update. We could utilize instant apps to create a viewer with an engaging and interactive interface, but I'm conscious that we should include multiple pages and apps in a single source or URL to remove confusion or complexity when we push this out to the public and the wider community. So let's take a look at how we might use Experience Builder to create a shared theme across my organization, and then I'll hand over to Adriana to continue building our website ready for public release. So here we have my organization's uh, homepage and portal. I'm going to move over to Experience Builder. And you can see here that I haven't got any experiences to work from, and that's fine because what I want to do is look at the templates we have available. So I plan to make an organization template that Adriana can pick up and work from. If we move over to creating a new experience, you can see that we've got a host of templates to choose from, including some new additions from the November update. But what we're going to look at today is starting with a blank full screen and just show you how easy it is to create a really custom design. So for those of you that haven't seen this before, this is the Experience Builder editing or landing page. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll run around the UI really quickly and we'll try and cover off uh, all the different pieces and bits of functionality that we've got. So we'll start on the left hand side and we'll move down to the theme tab. First of all, you can see we've got some out of the box options, including an organization shared theme, but we're going to customize the default theme today to fit our branding. As we come into customize, I'm just going to change the primary color so we can use a hex code to do that. But it's worth noting here that we've got some advanced color options and they're well worth taking the time to have a look at. So moving on to the next option, we could add some utility services, for example, geocoding or printing services. But for our app today, I don't think that's necessary. 
So we'll move on to the, the data part of the widgets on the left hand side. Now, there's two ways to add data into Experience Builder. This is one of them uh, and it will become apparent shortly the other version. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add our community bin survey results web map in there for Adriana to pick up. And then we'll have a look at the pages that we've got available. So right now we have uh, just a blank single page. We can see it listed here. So I'm going to go ahead and rename that while we're here. But I know that I want a multi-page multi -page app, so we'll go ahead and add a second page in and we'll name it accordingly. And then we'll look at how we can navigate between these pages in just a moment. The next option is where we can choose the drag and drop widgets that are available out of the box. Uh, I'm not going to go into loads of detail on these because Adriana is going to discuss some of the options available. But as I move around, you can see we range from map and data centric to layout or navigation widgets. So there's a lot of options to choose from here. As we move up, we can uh, change the title. So let's go ahead and do that so it makes sense. And you'll notice that there's a little draft button on the right hand side of the title. So this is uh, interactive in terms of when we save and publish, this will change us to reflect the state of the app. As we move across the top, we can lock the layout once we're finished uh, designing our template or our experience. And we have the ability to live view the widgets and the functionality of our page as we build it. Next, we have some screen size options and Adriana will go into a little bit more detail on how to optimize for mobile screens, for example. Um, and we can choose different resolutions to base our web page off to really give us some flexibility on how it looks on different devices. We've got some basic editing functions, so an undo and redo button as well as save and a preview button. But you'll notice that the publish button on the far right hand side is separate to these. So this is a really important point to note here that we can save our experience as we're working and we can test it and preview it. We can then go ahead and publish this out to a public URL, for example. And then if we were to come back to the experience and make changes, we can go ahead and edit our experience. We can save it and test it without having to publish it and take our public facing URL offline or make uh, breaking changes, for example. And then on the right hand side, this is where we get the ability to interact with either the widgets or the page in our experience. So while we're here, I'll go ahead and turn a header on. You'll notice that the color I've set pops up and we'll go ahead and pick a template for our header. I know that I don't want an image, but I do want two uh, pieces of text or links to get us between. And I'll change this to a suitable size, so 50 pixels, I think. And then it's important to note that we've got to come over to our other pages and just turn the header on as well. So now I'm going to save this experience, but I'm not going to publish it because, like I said earlier, I'd like to generate a template for Adriana to work from. You'll notice that the uh, draft option or button changes slightly in the top left and we get a slight name change. So we can come in here and edit this. And then all I need to do is publish our uh, template and this will be shared across the organization. So Adriana, if you'd like to carry on working on the experience now and take us to the, the end website that we're going for. Thank you, Dan. So um, as you can see, this is my current page where I've got my existing templates, but I'm gonna go ahead and refresh that and hopefully we'll be able to see the template that Dan has just gone ahead and shared with me. So as we can see, I've now got that template and I can go ahead and edit that. So we'll be building the application today um, in a matter of minutes, basically showing two pages, the home page in which we want to provide the public some information about fly tipping um, and where the hotspots in their local area are. And then we also want to give people the option to actually participate in the survey and record um, their responses of fly tipping and where they're occurring. So to go in on my home page, I'm actually going to bring in a new widget that was added in the release uh, in the update of Experience Builder that occurred last week. And this is a grid template, which I can find under the layout section. So if I bring in this grid, I can add it onto the page and size it how I would like. And I can then choose a grid template from this. I'm going to select template number one, but it's important to note that you're not tied to the template options that are provided. So you can resize certain widgets as and how you would like to present the information in the manner that is applicable for you. So now I'm going to go ahead and add a widget. And as you can see, it's provided me with all the widget options here. And I can actually go ahead and either search for the widget I would like 
or in this case, I just want the map and I can see it already. So I'm just going to click the map in and press unlock. It's really important with the widgets when we add them to actually unlock the feature so that we can um, edit the data accordingly and resize things and customize it to how we would like. So I'm going to go ahead and select the map, which Dan already brought in earlier. And as you can see, it's just updated. A really nice feature of Experience Builder is the fact that we can actually change the viewpoint that you're looking at. So I think this is quite zoomed out for the application I would like to produce. So I'm just going to go ahead and modify that view and just zoom in a bit. Now I'm going to bring in some text into my application so I can go ahead and search for the text function and bring that widget in. Now with this, I have the capability of importing my text and changing how the look of my text is. So I would like for my header to be a different size. So I'm just going to go ahead and increase that accordingly. And then increase all the other size of the text that I've currently got on the page as well. Now, something else I would like to feature, which Dan mentioned earlier, is the fact that we can have consistent um, corporate branding when we are applying um, different colors throughout our applications. So I can go ahead and edit the theme color of my text and just change that here. And now we can see it's consistent with the blue I've got elsewhere on the page. So I can go ahead and now resize that accordingly and I've very quickly added some text and my map to my application. But I'd now like to make it a bit more interactive so people can see points on the map, but I want to actually give them the ability to interact with the data. So I'm going to go ahead and add a list widget. And what this does is I've got a series of templates that I can choose from. Now, since we've been using the grid template today, I'm going to stick with the grid theme and I'm going to import this template for my list. Now, it's important to select the data I'll be working with and I'd like it to cons be consistent with my map. So just link that up there. Now, I don't actually want to feature a button when I'm working in this um, specific list, so I can just go ahead and delete the button. With my photos, I can actually press dynamic and add an attachment, and this will auto populate the attachment photos that I have located within the layer that's featured on in the map here, as we can see. Then I'd also like to actually go ahead and in that map, there's different occurrences of fly tipping. Um, so what's actually occurred at the scene? So I can go ahead and I can actually bring in some dynamic content from the layers um, and the fields I have in my layer. And I'm going to go ahead and bring in this feature. What is the issue with my bin? And then I would also like to provide people with the date and time at which that data was collected. So I can go ahead and add that in and just resize everything. And as you can see, it's automatically bringing in that date and time and the title of the different instances which are occurring on my map automatically. They're very different as we can see. So I'm just going to go ahead and save that quickly. And now we're going to pop over to the second page and add my participating um, links so people can actually submit a survey themselves. Now, when adding the participate function, because I'm using a survey already, ArcGIS Experience Builder actually has a feature, a widget that allows you to bring in uh, an existing uh, survey123 link. So as we can see here on the right hand side, I'm able to select an existing survey and it automatically brings through surveys in my ArcGIS online account. So I can select the one I need and insert it. And then I can determine how people interact with the survey, whether they submit a new record or edit existing records. In this instance, submitting a new record is exactly what I'd like to achieve. It's important to note though, you can also embed um, applications through other means. So there is the embed function here as well, the embed widget. And I can actually bring my survey in rather than going through the route of the survey application. I can bring my survey in by simply copying the URL to it and embedding that code. Once I've pasted my URL, the um, survey will automatically update. And if I click on live view, I'm able to actually interact with the survey currently to show you that it is the exact same survey that we had just bought in here. The really nice thing about using the embed feature and the embed widget is that we're actually able to not just embed surveys like I've done, but anything that has a, a URL. For example, 
an ArcGIS dashboard, or even going outside the realms of ArcGIS software, we could even bring in a YouTube video, for example. In this instance, I don't need to keep both applications. It was simply to show that we are able to bring in surveys via multiple different ways. So I'm going to go ahead and actually remove the embed function and just expand this survey here. So now I'm going to show you how we can actually use this simple application I've made, but make it mobile friendly, because I'm very aware that public members, members of the public will probably be submitting um, their data about fly tipping on their mobile phones. So if I click on the phone feature here, as we can see, everything's automatically resized itself, but I'd actually like to control um, the custom view myself. So I'm going to go ahead and unlock the widgets and also click custom view. Now it will prompt me with a warning sign just asking if I'm OK to be manually arranging these widgets, which I am, so I'm going to be clicking OK. Now that I'm able to actually um, rearrange the widgets myself, I can go ahead um, and I'll be dragging the map further down on the page um, and bringing the text up to the top. I can basically have a control of how I would like for the, everything on the page to be uh, displayed. So if I actually go ahead now and just resize this feature here, um, I can very simply bring in my text, alter the sizing because it's all uh, very big right now, not for the mobile screen. There we go. Um, and I'd actually like to now uh, resize this application here and just make it a bit smaller. My apologies, I removed the map in that process. We're also actually able to um, edit the site, uh, background text and actions of our ma uh, applications if we would like to in a certain example, or we can just keep the features as they are currently. So now that I have uh, edited my app to show the fly tipping and the text in the same feature, I'm actually struggling a bit, as you can see, to resize this uh, widget here, but Let's get rid of the text in this instance because I actually don't need it. So I can move it to a pending list, which means I'm not deleting it from my actual application, but I can remove it off the screen just so I can see the information that's most important to me here, which is just looking at uh, what's occurring on the fly tipping and looking at it on the map. If I now go overhead to the participate page, we can see that this is automatically resized to fit the screen size accordingly. So I don't actually have to do any work on this page. But as you can see very quickly, We've input some information into an application where we've got text, different types of um, media and ways of interacting with your applications and your maps. And very simply, in a few minutes, we've actually made a successful application. So if I go ahead and save this now, I can then publish my application. And just to display how it would look, we've got our text, we've got our map. Um, I can go ahead and actually interact with the features I've brought through. So if I clicked this feature, you'll see it appears here on the map in blue um, and I can just interact with uh, my map accordingly and then find out some additional information if I would like on to actually what's occurred at the point of fly tipping. And as we saw earlier, I'm actually uh, allowing people to add in their own um, accounts of what's happening of fly tipping in their area through this embedded survey. So now to look at an experience that I have made beforehand, which has had a bit more time spent on it. Uh, this is just to show you what you could achieve without JS Experience Builder um, if you're not making an application in a number of minutes like we just have done. So this application here has different um, widgets and applications where, where I hover over them. It provides me with more information about what's actually um, under these different tabs. And if I go ahead and click on the necessary tab, it will take me out to that page where, again, I use that embed feature to bring in different functions from my ArcGIS um, uh, contents page. Uh, in this example, I've got a map that I can interact with and look at the data. Or if I scroll down, I've got a dashboard uh, or a web application in this example. And as you can see, I'm able to actually uh, dynamically interact with the content live. I can then also look at different examples, for example, a dashboard, 
or even like I'd said earlier about embedding YouTube videos, for example. The capabilities of using Experience Builder to tailor your experience really are endless. So in summary, what Dan and I have showed you today is first of all, looking at Experience Builder and talking about what it is and the simple benefits and advantages of using Experience Builder, including new features um, in our release last week and new widgets. We've also looked at functionality comparisons with applications such as Instant Apps and Web App Builder. But ultimately, I prefer Experience Builder in this example that we've showed you today, as you saw the flexibility and speed at which we can perform applications and create web applications which are under one URL but have multiple functionality purposes. So now on to our Q&A. Um, Dan and I will, uh, will be answering your questions. So uh, just to jump in, uh, thanks for that, Dan and Aid. Uh, while you catch your breath, um, I'll kick off the Q and A. Um, we'll come to the kind of priority questions in a second. One of the ones that I just wanted to quickly cover off was around the app sizing. So the default behaviour for an app built with Experience Builder is that it will automatically resize and and kind of adapt the UI to different screen sizes. The difference with it with Experience Builder is that if you don't, you can preview that um, behavior. And if you want to change the way it's adapting, you have that option to kind of uh, switch and customize it. So by default, it will uh, adapt uh, to different screen sizes. And it's it's about having that extra uh, option to to kind of step in and, and make your own changes. Um, so um, yeah, Dan, Aid, feel free to pitch in. Uh, I can kind of carry on. I've, I've had a chance to kind of read some of the questions in the background while you've been presenting. Um, so in terms of the license um, experience builder, you need the um, license ability to be able to create content in your ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise um, environment. And that means essentially something like a creator license or above. Um, the next one that's uh, proving popular is about an instructor-led uh, training course. Uh, so I do know that this is being worked on at the moment. So that's one to look out for uh, as we go into the beginning of next year. Um, so keep an eye out for that. There is one in development at the moment. Um, so I've just seen a question about, um, we've mentioned public sharing, what about private sharing? So with Experience Builder, as with any other applications in ArcGIS Online, you're able to control who you share it to, whether that just be yourself viewing the application or a group. So for example, internal staff within your organisation, or if you would like that public sharing that is always available. Um, in terms of the layers in the map, um, I've been having a little bit of a look into this. At the moment, the map widget doesn't um, have, although you can customise the extent that the map is uh, opening to, you can't control the layers at that level, but there are a couple of uh, alternative mechanisms you, you can use. Um, both of these are uh, talked about on the uh, community site for Experience Builder, um, and that's a really good resource um, if you've got questions. I've got lots of questions coming in, uh, which we're not going to have time to answer today, um, but that's somewhere that's uh, good to kind of check in on, both in terms of getting uh, answers to questions and also updates from the product team on uh, developments. But the two alternative mechanisms for controlling map layers, you can enable a layer widget and allow the user to control it, but you also have the option when you add your map as a data source, you can uh, configure the layers that are included at that point, um, and you can add the same map different times. So if you wanted to show different uh, flavors of the same map, you could add it as a data source more than once and configure it there. Another way to achieve this is to use bookmarks. And um, so there is a bookmark widget in uh, Experience Builder, and you could use that to, to kind of manage that layer visibility side of things. Um, another question that's uh, floated to the top is around um, geoprocessing. Uh, it's just dropped off the top slot, but um, 
it is under development, it's on the roadmap, and it's something that they are working towards. So if you're using Experience Builder within ArcGIS Enterprise, uh, there will be that um, uh, kind of option to tap into a, a geoprocessing um, thing. Um, but yeah, it's 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 on the it's on the roadmap and it is under development. Um, oops, I think I've just unchecked the wrong one because it moved. Uh, so let me pop that one off. Uh, I might need to go back and find one in a second. But in the meantime, uh, we've done the layers. Google Analytics um, again. Uh, this is something that a number of customers have been asking for, and it is. Uh, now in as a kind of change request and um, one of the things that you can do if you're looking to kind of influence the roadmap and things is is use the ideas uh, page in the Esri community site and um, people kind of post up essentially requests um, and ideas about how uh, what would improve our products and the development teams do monitor those very carefully and do kind of uh, keep an eye on those. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out there. Um, in terms of uh, Experience Builder and Web App Builder, they coexist at the moment um, and there isn't a, a retirement plan um, at the moment for Web App Builder, but because of the difference in the underlying technology, and um, so Web App Builder is built on JavaScript 3 uh, Experience Builder is built on JavaScript 4. Yeah, longer term, if you want to make use of the new uh, options that come through as part of that kind of transition to JavaScript 4, um, then that does require you to start um, working with Experience Builder. And, and I think, you know, we're now at a stage, Experience Builder is still in development, it is maturing. I think now is a good time to be starting to look at it in terms of you know, you, you kind of plans for future apps. Does it have what you need now? And if it does, you know, maybe maybe it's a good time to start using Experience Builder to create your web apps because they do have that uh, ability to use some of the new features um, and and kind of features coming through from the map viewer as well and some of the, the nice new cartography options and uh, various other bits and pieces that are being built in. Uh, I'm just going to quickly see if I can. Alistair, I'll just answer one yeah, quick go on, on uh, embedding maps into existing websites. Um, so yes, you can embed Experience Builder into websites. Um, I've tried it with uh, something called an iframe in HTML and it worked perfectly. Um, and it's also the same way you would utilize embedding content into Experience Builder through the embed widget. Um, so yes, it's possible. Um, I've just seen a question also about how do the public add to the survey? Do they need licensing um, and how does it work for privacy? Can they um, public edit things? So with the public survey, um, you don't need a license. Anybody can go ahead and um, add to that, to my knowledge. And then all I've done with the maps is made it so that they were, in, um, editing has not been enabled uh, behind the scenes in ArcGIS Online for the map. So it's a view only map um, which people can interact with and um, see the points on it, but actually, the only part that a member of the public could go in with that experience builder and edit would be the survey part. Um, one of the questions near the top is about uh, code. Uh, so with the with your experience builder app, if you're creating it within ArcGIS Online, there isn't a mechan there isn't a way to um, export the code. So it kind of works in a similar way to any of the other um, app builders, uh, whether that's web app builder, instant apps, story maps. You know, you're using a software as a service system and it's it's kind of incorporated into that. If you are using ArcGIS Enterprise, then by using the developer edition of Experience Builder, you you then have uh, that option to manage the code and, and store it uh, as, uh, under kind of source control. And um, so it depends what environment you're working in. Um, Google Analytics, this is a, a kind of mentioned this has been a popular one on um, request on the community site. And um, so it's it's in there, it's in there as a request and, and it's something that the development team will be uh, actively considering. Uh, the next question is a uh, is an interesting one that doesn't have a specific answer, I guess. Um, you know, in terms of um, it's always a little bit of a challenge with 
having so many different options at your fingertips, which app do you use for different projects? And I, I think story maps, you, you can use Experience Builder to create something that's very similar to a, a story map. You can also use Experience Builder to create something that's uh, similar to a web app builder app and also create uh, an app that's completely different. Um, I think it probably depends on the level of uh, functionality that you want within um, within that. And story maps, I guess, in a sense, is a little bit simpler to work with. So as long as story maps is able to do the things that you want it to do and manage the level of interaction that you want within your application, it's a really great uh, option. Um, and in terms of presenting um, kind of media and things like that, um, I guess it's it's kind of it handles more of the decision making in terms of layout for you. So it's it's a quicker thing to work with. If a story map isn't giving you that kind of flexibility and the ability to interact with it in the way that you want, then there's a good chance that you could create something in Experience Builder that will will answer those needs. And there's also that option to actually use both. And um, Adriana talked about um, embedding other applications into Experience Builder, and um, you can do it that way around. And then, of course, with Story Maps, there is also the option in, in a Story Map to embed an application. So you could always use a combination of the two. Um, if you've developed a custom widget in Web App Builder, there isn't a, there isn't a way to migrate that directly into Experience Builder. So if you have custom widgets that you've created in Web App Builder, you would need to redevelop those for Experience Builder. They are two um, separate um, underlying um, code bases. Um, there are filtering options. So one of the questions is about um, filtering on data selections. There is a filter capability within Experience Builder. Um, I haven't used it for a little while, so I'm not sure whether I know the specific answer to the question um, that the person's asking, but there are definitely ways of, of kind of filtering um, within an experience. And so I'd encourage you to have a look and, and see, see how that works. Uh, copying widgets between Experience Builder apps, that's an interesting question. That's not something I'd uh, thought of doing. I, fairly sure that there isn't a way to do that. Um, I guess it would be quite complex to manage um, behind the scenes. Um, if it is something that you think would make a big difference, then it's maybe worth, uh, again, worth posting that on the, the ideas site in the, the community. Um, and I guess in the meantime, it would be a case of uh, opening up both and, and kind of replicating what you've done uh, in the, the other one. The other way to achieve this, actually thinking about it, if you if you knew you were going to want the same functionality across a set of apps is to use the template mechanism that Dan showed. So in his template, it was about having a basic structure and some branding, but you could take that further and you could use uh, an existing, uh, you, could, you could kind of add in those core functions that you want across a series of apps and use that as a template. You can also duplicate an experience. So if you've already built one uh, experience and you want to create something that has some similarities, uh, you can duplicate them uh, and work that way, uh, which I guess essentially is giving you a way to copy the widgets. Um, somebody's asked about the version of Enterprise that Experience Builder is available in, and I should know the answer to this, um, but I've managed to forget it, so I'm not going to try and answer it. Um, it's it came into Experience Builder, I think, in ten rather than uh, the most recent, which is eleven. Um, plus, uh, but I can't remember which version of ten. It's been there for at least two years, maybe a little bit longer. Um, I'd need to go and double check. Uh, if I guess, I'll guess wrong. So I'm not going to. Um, blah, blah, blah. So um, the top question talks about surveys. So if you embed a survey into Experience Builder, um, you can, oh, a colleague has just let me know that it was Enterprise 1081. Um, they've been listening into the webinar and have kindly gone off and uh, checked for me. So uh, Experience Builder came into 1081 uh, version of Enterprise. 
Um, so the survey, if you use the survey one, two, three widget within Experience Builder, in terms of the data that's coming in through that survey, it will behave in exactly the same way as if you use survey one, two, three in any of its other forms. Um, so I'm guessing that's the, the, the kind of gist of what they're uh, asking there. One of one of the other things that they started to add into uh, a range of the different app uh, options is the ability to export data um, from a, a kind of filtered view within a widget. And I'm trying to remember, I've got a feeling that came in recently in Experience Builder, and if it hasn't, it's being looked at uh, as an option. Uh, I don't have any information on the timeline for the batch editor. Um, the product manager does post uh, updated versions of the roadmap uh, on the community site. So again, I'd kind of encourage you to, to go and take a look there. Um, and then uh, public and private sharing. Yeah, so when you create, as with anything else, if you create an experience builder, it starts as private um, and only you can access it. You can then choose whether you share to uh, a group, whether you share to your whole organization or whether you make it public. And um, so it has the same the same security and access mechanism behind it as any other um, app created uh, within your portal, whether that's online or um, enterprise. And just finally, because uh, we need to, to kind of wrap this up and let you go, it's great that we've had so much interest. Um, and the, in the follow up, well, I remember in the follow up email, it will, uh, there'll be a survey and the survey would give you an opportunity to kind of, um, for those of you that we've not managed to, to kind of get to in terms of the questions, um, you can uh, kind of sort of reach out through that or talk to your Esri, represent, Esri UK representative um, and, you know, it, it, lots of people are kind of coming uh, starting to look at Experience Builder, so it's a good time to kind of reach out and, and get the, the kind of help and information that you need. Um, offline maps, there isn't an offline mode for Experience Builder, um, so it is a browser-based um, uh, app and uh, it doesn't have a, an offline mode as such. Uh, you could use it in a mobile device, but uh, it does require a connection. Um, so I think that's probably uh, where we should wrap things up for today. Um, so thanks again to Dan and Adriana for um, taking us on a tour through uh, Experience Builder and a, a look at instant apps as well. Um, and then uh, thanks again for all of your interest and questions uh, and apologies if we've not uh, had a chance to answer your question today.